Get off my lawn! It's live! I don't believe it! And ladies and gentlemen, you can probably tell, Gidge is back, Ruby's back, we're in the Rancheria, evacuation's lifted, holy the, the power of the buckle and the bulge! Isn't it like the Battle of the Bulge? It is. <laughs> it is, and it was. And of course, uh, well, let's just show them, because we didn't set it up in advance. We'll show them in any now. Oops. What are we showing them? We're going to show them the Bulge, not the Bulge with the Bulge. Oh, come on. Not, this isn't a family show. It's a family show. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, come on. This is important stuff. Yeah, you, you lose them, the dancers. Hey, look, everybody. Oh, cool. And I'm going to go. What does Ruby think about that? Get off my lawn. Boom. And you know what that means. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho. Here we go. Here we go. Out of here. He'll ruin your day. He's got more mental problems than a shrink could ever say. He's obfuscating for very feeling and constantly pontificating, procrastinating, cream to spread, and forever belly aching, exasperating, aggravating. Get off my lawn! And I did it in the smoke and the fire, too. I know he did. He did. That's crap. Wow. Yes, folks, we're back from evacuation. Well, one of us. Gidge was out having a wonderful time in uh, well, vacationing I, in Mendocino. Well, do you have anything to say for yourself? I left before the fire started. Yeah, yes, she didn't uh, know I that did we not didn't know. I want to be real clear. I abandoned no one. She abandoned the heat is what she abandoned. I abandoned the heat and then all hell broke loose while I was gone. So why come back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave it all to me. <laughs> that's, that's right. And so we evacuated and I somehow managed to come back and sneak in every now and then. The fire hadn't encroached this far and I kept the gardens alive you and really I uh, grabbed new stuff every time I came back. As as you know from, I want a big shout out to Steve and Dixie for putting up with me and putting me up and giving me that uh, little hostage bunker with which I uh, did the show last Wednesday. No, no, last Saturday. And um, I don't know what day it, it is. It just feels great to be home and back in the saddle again and to see y'all and <clears throat> I do you want to say, well, what can you make me a Santini? I'm really well, person. you're sitting there with a drink. And I know. I'm well, I started early and you know, it's been stressful. Uh, just want to say that you know, these kinds of things they happen. And I know there's a big political convention going on, and that's why probably nobody's watching. But uh, this is real life stuff, you know. And and I, I think I said a week ago when I was worried that I would be evacuated. That the Buddhist thing about, you know, just having love in your life uh, is great. But, you know, I always thought that Buddhist stuff worked better when you had, had when, you, when you have your stuff. The Buddhist thing is so great when you got your shit. But when you don't got your shit, it gets tougher to be that way. Um, now, I do want to send my heart out to all the people out there that have lost loved ones and pets and property, uh, believe me, uh, I know how lucky I am. I'm grateful, and I can tell you that I just, I hope you have good people around you, because I sure did, and it made it for me. I mean, while I was out there going, I'm maybe going to have to move to a new place or have something. Anyway, this is the kind of thing that really makes life great. <laughs>
guys for all your concern. Rancheria has survived. It feels really good. I could drive. We're back in the saddle again. Ruby there. I think Ruby. Yeah, she yeah. was. She was. That was pretty. 
That was pretty epic, Ruby. Good job. I gave her that wonderful dinner. You know, yeah. I think she was really kind but of... But she kind of like ran out and boom, it was, <laughs> it was like the quarters ran out. You know? <laughs> that was kind of funny. Okay, okay. Love you, bye. Okay, well, you got to come back. Ciao for now. You know, because people were telling me they were going to stop watching if you didn't oh, come back. Oh, baloney. I've heard it all now. You know, and it's yeah. hard to do this all by yourself. Well, come on. We got a couple of guests for you, and um, what can I say? I'm just so damn glad to be back in this canyon. And... Uh, Thank you for all your concern. A lot of people, a lot of people reached out to me and uh, and wished me well and was concerned and offered me places to stay. And um, a lot of them told me if I needed help that I should call 911. You know, just real good friends. And, um, oh and so, <laughs> kind of reminds me of a story. You know, when you're away from the house, it gives you a whole new sense. I mean, I've been on the road my whole life, and when I come home, it's got a nice feeling. It reminds me of a, brings to mind a little story. You know, you see these two old cowhands riding the range, mending fences for about three weeks. And they come back. see the bunkhouse off in the distance. The smoke is coming out the chimney. They can damn near smell the coffee and the bacon frying. One says the other, he says, you know, when I get home, I'm going to rip me my wife's panties off. You know, after three weeks in the saddle, they really start to dig into my hip. See, there's this cowboy and a lawyer and a doctor hanging out at a bar. doctor launches off first. He goes, you know, when I die, I hope they'll say, and they're all looking at me, you know, at my funeral, hope they'll say he was a man who always went the distance, tried to help everybody to make the world a better place through health and well-being. A true humanitarian Or not to be outdone, of course, says, well, when I'm there laying down there and they're all looking at me, I hope they'll say that he was never afraid to fight for the little guy, a man who always stood up for right, a man of justice. cowboy and he's kind of a bit perplexed if a cowboy could be perplexed and he says well I guess when I'm laying there and they're all looking at me I guess I hope they'll say look he's moving
thank you. That, you know, that was a song that, that kind of... really beautiful. Thank you. That was a song that came to me earlier this week as I was um, sitting wondering if I'd ever have a house again, or this house again. And it's a song that uh, was a big hit by uh, Dionne Dion Warwick. It was a Burt Backrack song. It's called A House Is Not a Home. Which is the sentiment there was, you know, if you're, you know, if the loved ones you have aren't in there. And it's true. I mean, as great as, and the memories are the memories, though. We will always have those. And as long as we're together, and as long as we look out for each other, we're okay. We're going to be okay. I mean, there's going to be hard times with or without the home, with or without the house. But there's going to be really hard times without each other. So, um... That's just kind of where my head went. And so I tried to figure it out just now. <laughs> and well, we could do any place I hang my hat is home. That's, you know, that's another one that I thought I, of it, though. we should do. Yeah. I love that song. Anyways, it's guest time at the Grumps Rancheria. And I know everybody's busy watching the convention, so I'm sorry to put my dear friend Steve, we have a theme running with our guest tonight. Um, I'm going to let you see if you can tell what it is before I uh, before I tell you. Anyways, I'm going to go here. And again, you're going to watch Grumps Fumble fum with OK. We got this. We got Bruce. Oh. Steve Alchek. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. And I love the show, so thanks for asking me to send something in. Here's a tune.
here. Thank you, Steve. Now, the funny thing has happened on Facebook. It can't play the video, but it's showing me that we're real, really still broadcasting. So I'm just going to ignore it and assume that you people in Facebook land know. Oh, it came back. No, it left. Just going to tell you right now that that is, that is Steve Kowalczyk. Kowalczyk. He is a fantastic guitar player living right now in Greeley, Colorado. Teaches at University of Northern Colorado from Nashville, just a burning player, and uh, a dear friend, which is so important these days. So, um, I, hey, Gage, can you go on Facebook and see if this is still working? I don't want to reset it right now. Okay, give me a second. Uh, sooner the better. Come, come, come this is show business, you know, we're losing the dancers. Anyways, Steve Kowalczyk, a fantastic player. You need to look him up. As you can hear, he's a fantastic player. Thanks for sending that in. And you'll notice he was a, uh, a red-headed gentleman with a red beard. So we have another one coming up for you. I guess we got, to, what do they call them now? Redheads. What's the, what's the proper politically correct term for redhead other than redhead? Ginger. Ginger. Huh? Ginger. Ginger, is that, is that derogatory or is that okay? I have no idea. I'm trying Anyways, uh, I used to be red-haired before. My, my mustache was sort of red. My beard is, was sort of red. Now it's, um, it's uh, ginger-colored, um, like real ginger. Anyways, um, wow, you stepped out of a drum. What a great song. Thank you for that call, man. So, okay, folks, if you're there, come right back. Come right back, because I'm coming back on. She, no, Wendy says in one minute, you're running smooth on FB. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm, but it's it's not playing it, so I don't care. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just saying, folks, let's all get together and make this a real TV show on a real network so that uh, we can have actual people running the show and we can... You know? No, it's, it's Okay. I'm going to stay. No, no, I'm not broadcasting anything. It says zero, zero, zeros. Well, why am I getting it? It's going to go away in a second. Okay, it just went away. But it's going to go away, I'm telling you. Ah, it's back again. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to keep playing. Hey. Well, I'm going to talk about stories right now because really, in fact, stories are what we are. Stories are what makes music so powerful. Stories are what makes life so powerful. And, you know, songs are like stories. And sure, you can play them, but it's better to let them play you. So... And that's what Sonny Rollins and Calvin taught me. Now, you may wonder what a 16th century Protestant reformer and a tenor saxophone colossus have in common. Well, I really wouldn't know, you see, because Calvin is my horse. And Calvin knows more about being a horse than 
than I'll ever know about being a writer. And when you think about stories, they're what we are, what make us who we are, and why something like the red guitar is so powerful. Stories shared, they give us context and community, and by telling them, I fiercely exert my originality. And back to old Sonny Rollins, he knows that. You see, because it's better to play from where you are and let the song tell you what to do. Beneath the borderland Where the 
Well, let me go look on my. It says zero zero zero. I'm. It's really distracting and. No, you're we, we, fucking Mark look, Zuckerberg. Look. But look, it's a zero. We're not doing anything. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna ignore I'm gonna this. Leave, I'm gonna I, leave this here. I just wanted. To, I would love to show you. It says, "Sorry, we're having trouble playing this video." Yeah, oh, okay. Here. That's at least no dishonor. Okay. Well, everybody, pardon me for being a slight bit distracted. I'm gonna play one more chorus of that song just to prove I know it. <laughs> this is, of course, Gidget's King. Besides, wonderful to be home, back in the saddle again, I have another guest. This is a man who has some similar characteristics to our previous guest, Steve. He's um, younger, 
another fantastic guitar player, just like Steve. And um, I've known him since he was quite a young man. Actually, he was one of the participants in a mentoring program I started many years ago called Jazz Masters Workshop, which provided over 3,500 free workshops to kids of all backgrounds and ages in, all, I mean, in New York and in L.A. area and the Bay Area and here in the Monterey area and Chicago, um, all free of charge. I went out and raised the money and made sure that professional musicians, great players, could hang out with these kids and play, which is the way I got an opportunity to learn. And I didn't want to see that go away in a, in a world where selling DVDs and being online was the way to do it. I just felt that playing in person with great players is what made me who I am. And of course, why would I want to make anybody who I am like me? But that's kind of the way it happened. Anyways, this is a young man named Perry Smith. He's in a... In, he he's, uh, lives in New York, plays with a lot of different people. I know he's playing with Jane Monheit some. He's got his own records out. And he's in a fantastic trio of guitar players called New West. The New West Guitar Trio with John Story and Will Brom. And they have records out as well. So this is just something you want to check out. But when this, you hear this guy play, I, it will make all of my words superfluous. Ladies and gentlemen, Perry Smith. And what does he have in common with Steve Kowalczyk?
Woo! Man. These young kids today. Anyways, notice the red beard. Okay, we've got a red beard theme today. And uh, thank you, Perry. And as we wind up this show, because there we have already gone there, and of course all of you are in a hurry to race off to the whatever political convention is happening. I think this is going to be the new thing. We just have one, one a week, and we'll just uh, ignore the fact that we've got problems that we really need to deal with. Uh, you know, because it's like my house was burning down, and then I kind of almost for a second forgot about a pandemic. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot about unemployment. No gigs and stuff. Anyways, I just want to thank everybody for being so much there, so nice, so caring. I want to thank the powers that be, the firefighters. Yeah, firefighters! Who made it so that Woo! we still have a home to live in. Our heroes! My heart goes out to people who lost loved ones, lost pets, Ooh. and lost... Um, pets loved ones. And lost their homes. Pets and are people, belonged. too. And so I just want to say... We all need to stick together here, folks. This is what's going to get us through all this shit. Eventually, these knuckleheads will figure out that they, they actually work for us. And they'll start thinking about it that way. No, but well, I think they will if we stick together. I think that's the key. So I'm just going to be positive and try to keep it positive and remind all of you to be active by making the world a better place. And Register to vote. That, too. And, but just do good work and, and run for office for all, for God's sakes. And like, I just can't wait till there's gigs again so I don't have to keep bothering you on Wednesday and Saturday at 5. Do want to let you know that if you did have any dropouts, farts, snarts, slips, and slips, all of these shows, all 44 of them, because this is Grumps 44 now, Whoa. are up on the YouTube channel. This will be up soon as soon as I figure out how to upload it and everything. And uh, for those of you that just can't get enough Grumps TV, we do have merch. We have, of course, the toilet paper earrings and charms and guitar ornaments. And we have the buckle. Kaboom, kaboom. How many buckles have we sold? We've sold 14,292. Oh, man. Those elves better get cracking. I know. So we're going to keep them working. Anyways, thank you so much for being a part of Grumps TV. I'm going to let our official theme of uh, production done by Jake Reed, sung by Danielle D'Andrea, to, uh, to end the show instead of us having to do it. Because Gidge is making dinner, so she's too busy. So um, It's going to be a good one, too. And it's going to be a good dinner. And I, want you, I wish you all a good dinner. I wish you all great lives and happiness. And we will see you Wednesday because we have a huge announcement on this Wednesday. Is Wednesday. It's show Oh, this is was it Saturday? <laughs> Saturday show. Saturday show. We're gonna announce something really big. Whoa! It's gonna be world changing. Whoa! We already have the domain. I mean, this is serious, poo poo. So come back Saturday at five. Now go run off to wherever you're gonna run off to, whether it's a bunker or the TV or whatever, for those twelve people that are left. We love you. Good night and good luck and Asadi. And for you, buckles and buckles and buckles and bangles and beads. Don't try to cross him, he'll leave you with dismay. And don't try to boss him, he'll ruin your whole day. He's got more mental problems than a shrink could ever say. He's obfuscating, prevaricating, and constantly pontificating, procrastinating, cream cheese cream. Exasperating, aggravating, irritating, and infuriating And such an asshole